and uh, I will introduce our speakers. This is Olga Malchevska, the author of the film. Uh, Andrei Sokup, review of uh, Czech Business Journal, former correspondent in Moscow. Uh, Evgenia Fechenka, co-founder of online resources Top Fake uh, um, um, Reminka, uh, and uh, Oksana Velenska, uh, member of Radio Liberty, Ukraine editorial office in Prague. The first question is not to the author, uh, because the author told us everything was her film, and I will ask uh, 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 Andrei Sogub. I would like to ask what is the situation now, and uh, uh, what happens uh, in uh, uh, Prague now? What are what is their position? I won't say that uh, the situation is uh, different, but uh, there are some interesting details as about the uh, local elevation and, and um, some uh, both these companies they um, have some losses and the situation was shown in the film. But the Remax company also, they, there was some corruption because the company should pay uh, uh, 250 million kronas to the state because they trade uh, with some uh, s uh, corruptive structure and, and uh, the, as to the main hero, Czech President Miloš Zeman, he uh, continues uh, his activity, his uh, political uh, direction, and uh, also uh, the, in Ukrainian media they also highlighted uh, this event that uh, he um, uh, there was a state uh, international uh, organization of Russians. Uh, there are 20 people, and with their, also with their families. These people, they uh, uh, say in the media that uh, you, uh, Ukraine. Um, Ukraine. Um, uh, doesn't provide proper attitude to Russians uh, and uh, the things like this. There was an arrest of one of the Czech parliamentarians because uh, uh, he got uh, a big sum of money through uh, the bank. And uh, do you remember the name? No, I don't remember the name, but uh, this is one of the... Maybe I won't go into details. And the film, uh, would you uh, make it differently? What about Ukrainian view and what is uh, your view towards the situation? All the facts are familiar to uh, Czech people and uh, uh, this is a good film. I don't think there's much difference in our view, but uh, maybe uh, I know Roj Zeman for more than 20 years. When I was a student, I worked uh, uh, in an archive of uh, social uh, pa social party headed by uh, Zeman and. Uh, uh, he brought this party to 30 percent in four years, and this is, was a small organization. We knew everyone, and I remember um, uh, him at that time. Uh, he values himself very highly, and uh, I think that 
it's not a conspiracy theory. Uh, it's not that he is paid by Moscow uh, or that he is a pu uh, Putin's puppet. No, he has a super ego, and uh, that, that is the only thing I wanted to add. And 25 years ago, he was against Kremlin, and now he's for the Kremlin. He supports all the actions of uh, the Kremlin. I think that uh, this is a uh, role. He wants to be in the center of attention. And maybe not everyone remembered that uh, uh, in the end of May 2014, he addressed, uh, he addressed NATO with the uh, declaration that uh, uh, NATO forces should be involved. And everyone said, what? What happened? Why? And uh, uh, he was against the mainstream. And when everyone said that we should support Ukraine and do something at that time, he reversed his trend and went to the opposition to the mainstream. and. Uh, this is his way how to survive politically, to mobilize his proponents. And he was uh, uh, elected by people, and he uh, uh, he played in the contrasts between intellectuals and common real people. We are men, and we create some values, material values. He played on these contrasts. Of course, we believe that this is not correct, uh, but uh, he does it uh, consciously. He likes his role. He is an elitist. He believes that he is the most clever, but he plays a simple guy, this role uh, that he can be drunk, he likes to talk, but he doesn't listen uh, to people. He manipulates. This is his strategy, how to be a president and to, to receive a, uh, and to, to be elected uh, the second time. And I have a question to Mr. Fechenka. He knows about strategies of Russia in different countries in this film. I heard the uh, important phrase that uh, for most uh, Czechs, uh, Russia is not uh, interesting. But uh, I believe that uh, this uh, characterizes what Russia do in other countries. It uses such people in order to promote their interests and uh, um, do not attract too much attention. I believe that the uh, position of Andrei is very important. Uh, Zeman uh, asked for introduction of NATO forces into Ukraine. We also wanted to take this episode, but uh, we. Uh, he said that uh, if Russia uh, introduced its troops into the territory of Ukraine, then I would uh, address NATO and ask them to introduce the NATO troops into Ukraine. But he said that he uh, believes uh, Sergei Lavrov uh, that uh, there's no Russian forces in Ukraine. Uh, so this was a play. It was. Uh, um, uh, thank you very much. And then I give the floor to uh, other, uh, the next speaker. Uh, the scheme is very simple. We should speak not about uh, Russia in different countries, because uh, Frenchmen or Italians, they are not interested in what happens in Russia. And uh, when Russia today started its activity, they took this for the uh, ground uh, to promote brand of uh, brand of Russia, and they uh, spoke about national culture, history, politics, and they uh, didn't have uh, any audience because in each country they have their own uh, traditions. 
and everyone who wants to know something about Russia, they can get information without uh, uh, TV channel. They can get it uh, through the internet, and then they took the decision that they should speak uh, uh, what other people's uh, people are interested in, and this is a classic uh, um, uh, experience that was used by the uh, KGB. Uh, you should speak not about what you are interested in, but uh, sh you should speak about the interests of other people, uh, that uh, uh, they should uh, say that uh, I will do something, very, uh, some good things for you, I want to speak about your problems, and at this level, uh, the Russian propaganda works, they say that let's speak about the problems uh, uh, that exist in different countries. For example, the problem of refugees, that is very important for EU countries, uh, and they use this uh, problem. Uh, and uh, they uh, say that we uh, we know how to solve this problem effectively. And Lavrov told about it uh, many times that Russia have a big experience how to work with the refugees, that we, ca we can share this experience with you. You have problems, uh, some other, uh, some, you have some other problems, so we know we have experience, and uh, we, uh, you have problems in Syria, so we know how to work with Syria or Afghanistan. Uh, terrorism, oh, without any problem. We had two wars in Chechnya, so we know how to deal with the problem. And uh, uh, so this is a proactive uh, way how to program uh, these ideas. And uh, people know their own problems. And uh, first they should define this problem, and then to define uh, these uh, cracks, and then work uh, to uh, how to make them bigger and to saturate them, uh, uh, to saturate this country with their in instruments and inf influence. And for example, in France, uh, the elections that happened there, and uh, maybe the last results, they um, maybe uh, show that uh, not uh, everything is uh, uh, can be done with the help of the money uh, that uh, um, it's uh, uh, not the case, actually, but uh, it can work. Maybe they can't reach the best results, but uh, um, in every country they use uh, a special instrument and they reach their goals. And uh, uh, what do you think, uh, what does this influence uh, Depend, depend on this. Uh, it depends on the uh, will to use it. The next is uh, uh, the will to uh, counteract it in other countries. And uh, the third one, it depends on financial resources because uh, here people. Oh, we are speaking about people because cooperation is among people. People can form parties, they can be in, uh, in the government, but uh, these are all people and they can be uh, idiots who work for ideas or they work for the money. And uh, uh, that's why a lot uh, will depend on ability to pay, how uh, what the Kremlin is ready to uh, give money for bigger projects. Uh, because if we are speaking about political parties, and we understand that in uh, all countries of uh, EU, uh, the priority is to create a new uh, parties uh, before elections. Uh, uh, we had such examples in Poland and some other countries, and also support of existing parties, Demos in Spain and other parties. Uh, these uh, uh, are very expensive projects, and uh, um, it depends on whether Russia is ready to, um, ex uh, to spend this money for these projects, uh, whether it, uh, it is ready. And uh, also, we say that, uh, like in propaganda, it's very important that uh, governments of uh, other sta states uh, should understand this program, uh, pro uh, problems, and uh, 
if uh, the governments uh, won't understand that so uh, they will con uh, they will continue uh, to spread uh, uh, this propaganda and uh, uh, and for this one year and a half, is the understanding of the European uh, European governments changed? I think yes, because when we just started talking about it one year and a half ago, the understanding was minimum. But then few events happened, and it it proved again and again that from the aspect of propaganda, that, that from the aspect of saturation of European Union, but such organization showed that Kremlin is not the structure, structure to be trusted. And in propagating the ideas of struggling propaganda, we were rather progressive because many governments, they didn't perceive it as a problem at all, and they didn't call it propaganda. Now we, st uh, we started entered it entered it into narrative, and it's very important after defining that it is a threat, what to do with it. Because the next step is our reaction. And here the possibilities of every government are completely different. At least in the focus of efforts reinforcement in st what we are doing in Stop Fake Project, we got a lot of verbal support. We've, we've been told that yes, this project is very good, but when we had some concrete projects, when we were asking for support, because uh, there were some projects that needed support, and very often we got the response it wasn't it wasn't possible because somebody could think this project is anti Kremlin, but we always say we always say that these kind of projects are pro Russian because first of all we need we need Russians themselves to know it, but everything has changed. For example, we started making Romanian version for Moldova, and we are supported by the embassy of Czech Republic in Ukraine. We are supported by the embassy of Great Britain in Ukraine. Really, it depends on the, go on the concrete government, and it changes. Thank you. That was very interesting. Your thesis were very interesting, and now I would like to go to, to Mr. Bogdan Yeremenko, because in the movie, there will be a lot of information that all these Kremlin agents, diploma diplomatic structures play an important role in the agent. Uh, are they really influence, influence and what about other countries? Is it the same as the Czech Republic? I think that first of all, we should go from the minimizing the threat and from the attempt to consider uh, separate components of Russia actions because in the movie, we are talking about the war, about about the new kinds of waging the war. This war is psychological, but it should lead, according to this, according to the generals from the Russian general staff, it should lead to the same consequences. To force your own will to change to change the present peace structure, to keep your preferences, and in this case, propaganda is not just a source of information. There are psychological approaches, changing the picture of the world, not just for the same for the some politicians, but also for the wider layers of populations. Also, it minimizes the will to resist because not all the governments can see the uh, can see the need to fight the propaganda or for example when we when we call the station the east of ukraine anti terroristic operation this is a consequences of lost propaganda war and of course the presence of R R russian federation just a small puzzle in the, uh, puzzle in the picture of the war that russian federation is waging it can't be as effective as massive psychological Psychological, psychological washing, but 
the place very important role it's more like a surgery surgery tool because around embassies there are influence groups embassy is embassies organizations where you can join business people where you can feed these people up for example you can invite invite them to the parties you can involve them into your narrative and that is a way of communication that helps you to find some leaders of, uh, of, of the opinion of the society. And of course, there were not there were no Russians who invented that for the first time the support of the support of the non-governmental organizations. But really, Russians for during the last few years we are not talking about one year and a half. We are talking about few years. They put money into these organizations, and you can and you can see it not just in Czech Republic, but in also countries of Eastern Ukraine, of Eastern Europe as well, or in Ukraine, in Georgia, for example, when you have a number of small newspaper or websites, and mechanism of their funding that goes through the embassy. Embassy is a, is a kind of tool, and it's not important how many out of them are spies, how many are diplomats. All of them are working for one. They are waging the war. And in this perspective, I have no response to a question because mechanism technology that Russians are using, transforming all the existing all the existing work mechanisms, for example, economic or trade or trade presence is not crime. Trade trade of energy is not crime, or diplomat presence also is not. Cultural presence also is not a crime, but Russians managed to make it the element of war, so to make something illegal. And the world is not ready to perceive that this traditional mechanism of cooperation can be the means of waging the war against them. That's why Russian psychological war, Russian propaganda, Russian hybrid war is so successful now. Also also in the embassies of Russia. And uh, for the last one year and a half, did the perception change that Russian embassies, that, Rus uh, that uh, Russian mili military attaches um, doing propaganda and they're, and they're really more influence agents that people representing their country. In this case, we need to discuss the image of Russia in general, and we can say that it, that it is lost completely. There is no trans trust to this country. There is no trust to the diplomacy of this country. So it's not that bad, you mean? No, but still they manage to be effective. And it's not very easy questions because we can't prohibit Russian diplomatic presence because it will be there because uh, they have legal uh, legal means of work, but their aims are not legal. And in fact, after collapse of Soviet Union, Russian diplomats all the All the time, all the time, uh, they were suspected as spies, or that they are doing not just diplomatic functions. And I think it will keep on, keep on going like that in other countries as well, because we have no doubts what are the, what are the real aims of Russian diplomacy, and it returns us once again to the sense of existence of, diploma of diplomatic relationships between Russia and Ukraine, because diplomatic relationships can exist only in the countries who who recognize and show that who are ready to work on their cooperation. But uh, looking, uh, looking at what Russian propaganda is doing in Czech Republic and other countries, it's not just the distorting of the, of the present picture, but it also distorts distortion of the historical context. They are saying that Ukraine shouldn't exist in these borders because uh, there are no basis for it. Some of the territories are not Ukrainians. And in this way, they are working in both directions. And 
they don't recognize our existence as a country. So what is the sense to have diplomatic relationship with this country? But now when we have situation with occupation and when we almost believe or we almost prove that Russian troops are fighting in the east of Ukraine, maybe we didn't prove it yet in the international court, but still we know these facts. For other countries, it's much more difficult to understand, to perceive Russian aggression and the role of Russian diplomats. If the country that is in the war with Russia doesn't break their diplomatic relationships with Russia. Thank you. And now I would like to give the floor to Oksana because she was the author of the investigation, Ukrainian portrait on, on Prague background. And I would like to come back to the movie once again and recall this hero who told that before I was Ukrainian and now I don't know and now I don't know who am I. How to work with these people? Is it possible at all to work with our co patriots? who are not Ukrainians, who were Ukrainians before, but they don't feel themselves Ukrainians now. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I got a cold, so maybe my voice won't be perfect. I would like to thank to Mr. Yeremenko because I think you told something very important. How Ukrainians are perceiving Czechs and how Czechs are perceiving Ukrainians is connected strongly to the historical context. How our view was formed to the Russia or to the Czechs, to the Czechs in, uh, towards Russia. At the moment, Czechs started distinguishing Ukrainians from Russians. Even before, they didn't care. Now this process is, diff is different. Oh, I can tell you. Uh, can tell you something from the common life, but we can understand a lot from it. On on the Czech channel, there was there was a story. Young woman was washing a window, and the Czech was was uh, was doing something on the table, and he was calculating. He's calculating some formula, and he can't do it. And this woman, she took, uh, she uh, she came to him. She could solve the formula and came back to washing to washing the windows. Czechs understand who are these people who are working in Czech Republic, but still, uh, before there was a perception that Ukraine is a part of Russia. And in the same way, we can look at your question because it is a huge problem and. I would like this meeting to come back to Václav Gavel because I'm going to to similar meetings in Czech Republic and they almost never remember Václav Gavel. But Václav Gavel is the father of very intelligent thesis and it would be nice to develop it in Ukraine as well. He told that that the biggest and the most important mistake of Russia is that Russia doesn't know where does it start, where does it end, where is the, where is the Russian border, how it was formed historically. We need to discuss it because this thesis existed from the very beginning of Václav Gavel presidency. In fact, Václav Gavel looked at the at these 20 years to say that this problem wasn't solved and now we can see the outbreak of this problem. We should tell that in historical way it was formed like that, but here Russia finished. And it's not just about geography, it's also about social policy, about economical policy, about mental policy. And we need to tell that there is, there is something Russian, there is something Ukrainian. Czech uh, distinguish it for themselves. For example, th there is no there is no definition of Czechoslovak Slovakian anymore. There is Czech Republic. There is Slo there is Slovakia. There is Slovak culture. Th there is Slovak language, and there is the right uh, Czech language and culture. But before, really, there was some Czechoslova Czechoslovak context. And that is the problem that was put by Václav Gavel. It exists, and as for me, Ukraine should work on this problem and discuss it loudly and openly and everywhere. 
and in Czech Republic as well. Because if we are looking this, if we are watching this movie, let's remember European tour of the biggest dance dance troupe of Russian army in Europe. They've been to Prague. They in ten mi in ten million Czech capital they had eight concerts. Who came to these concerts? Why didn't we deal with that? Why our country didn't react to that at all? There were enthusiasts, enthusiasts in Prague who came, who told them no. But why there were no corresponding thesis or statement from Ukrainian embassy? Because there are state, because there are state issues, and we need to react to them. Ukrainian state just told that we exist and we have different point of view to this event. Czech Republic invited them, but Baltic countries didn't allow them to come. All three Baltic countries didn't allow them to enter to enter their countries. And I believe that uh, they forget, uh, forgot the role uh, that uh, Václav Havel played uh, in 1991 and now. Thank you. It's very interesting to know about it, especially about Václav Havel, especially in the context that uh, Olga went to Prague um, and uh, uh, there was a, a scholarship for Václav Havel for her there. So when I saw first the script of this film, there were many comparisons with the situation that is now in Ukraine, and the very uh, and there were some parallels. And now in this film, there uh, aren't any. And I'm as an editor, I believe that this is good because uh, you focused uh, in, on Prague as, uh, and every. Um, a person can find his or her own parallels and interesting. Uh, uh, views uh, uh, and uh, establish uh, the parallels by themselves. But you, you um, Olga, can tell us about the parallels that are in the context that we can find in uh, different countries of Europe. Uh, thank you for your uh, tricky question. Uh, we uh, thought about our viewers and uh, uh, to uh, we thought that some names and events uh, of Czech Republic was, will be unfamiliar with the Czech situation. Of course, uh, I was there. I know about the facts, and I understand how uh, it is difficult for you to understand uh, this material. How uh, for, that for you it is difficult to understand and not to lose focus. And as to the parallels, uh, of course, the parallel was clear with the uh, revolution. You saw the, uh, how the students were uh, beaten, and uh, the, we can establish parallels with the beatings of students on Maidan. And uh, it was the opportunity for me to look ahead. And uh, uh, the revolution took place uh, uh, more than uh, 60, uh, 26 years ago. And uh, of course, we have uh, less time after Maidan, and uh, we can learn from their mistakes, maybe, and uh, uh, we can avoid some huge problems in the future. But uh, we have some disappointments uh, about which they are speaking about 26 uh, years. Uh, you remember maybe the prime minister said that this disappointment uh, with democracy accumulated in Czech uh, society. And as uh, uh, Vano said, uh, Russian propaganda manipulates this uh, issue. And uh, as they say in Rome, divide and conquer. First, you should divide them, and then you can rule as you wish. And we may say that the situation is the same. This model is not new. What happens now is not our not know-how. Uh, we can see that it works in other countries, and this is a fact. And we should make our conclusions, and we should avoid these problems. And for me, maybe this is the main parallel, but maybe you found uh, uh, some other parallels that are important to you. And uh, I'm thankful uh, to those activists who um, conduct these meetings uh, uh, to support Ukraine. Uh, and uh, these meetings, they are 
uh, not so numerous. Uh, there were uh, uh, 30, even 30,000 people uh, who uh, went into the main square. But um, uh, usually it's about uh, 300 people, but they still go. They uh, go in rain and uh, snow, and they um, conduct these uh, meetings. But the mainstream society, they won't go into the street, and I believe that uh, they shouldn't do this. This is uh, It's not their obligation as citizens, but they do it at the same time. So even if uh, 300 people out of uh, uh, millions do this, uh, it's still a positive trend, and we should maybe uh, we can criticize them for, for uh, the, uh, uh, that they are outnumbered, but they uh, do something, and we should understand that we should solve our own problems by ourselves. Thank you very much if we have some time left. So I would like to uh, maybe some questions to our speakers from the audience. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I have two questions. First, to the author. I think when you started uh, your film, you had some hypotheses. Uh, how this hypothesis changed? Maybe you imagined something before. What was uh, not like you thought about before? And the second question to Bogdan Yeremenko. You said that uh, you cannot uh, divide propaganda that is in Czech uh, or, and propaganda in other states. Can you define uh, the main trends in the propaganda? For example, party creation and uh, um, uh, support of some political movements or uh, some uh, propaganda ideas that are used by Russia in other countries. Uh, maybe uh, I will start. Uh, when I uh, went there, I didn't understand the environment, and uh, uh, there were many publications that uh, Czech president uh, was paid by uh, Kremlin. But uh, uh, what was it, and what are the limits of this event? Uh, I, we wanted to conduct our research and to uh, get to know what is really there. And we saw that the situation is really complicated, but this is not a direct influence. Uh, there's no suitcases with cash. But still, if we speak about the contracts with Gazprom and the affiliates uh, uh, that supply uh, to Prashsky Grad, um, so uh, we cannot say b that by this way they buy Czech president. We can only uh, pay attention and uh, focus our attention and raise some questions. And uh, uh, they say that uh, they buy gas from uh, spot markets, but why then uh, Gazprom supply gas to pr Praski Grad? Um, and why they have uh, uh, the network of uh, um, uh, fuel stations in the uh, Czech Republic. And uh, also I saw what Andrei uh, told us, that the society is not homogeneous. It's not only about president. The uh, lobby, Russian lobby is also in the parliament and uh, also in the government. and. Uh, and Vladek also uh, lobbies Russian interest in uh, uh, the government, but uh, the society is uh, still divided. And um, I saw that uh, they think why we should think about it after all. Uh, would it influence my uh, income? Or otherwise, uh, people said, and uh, we cut it uh, from our film. For example, Russian tourism, uh, this is a very, uh, they pay a lot, and uh, they pay three times more than, for example, uh, German tourists. So tourists, uh, then when they are drunk, they don't count money, they can spend it. And, uh, they, um, and the Germans, they um, uh, count their money. Uh, it saved them. And uh, the government of the Czech Republic, they say that uh, the overall 
they they said that uh, the market uh, tourist mar uh, tourist market redistributed. If, for example, Russian tourist uh, won't come to my hotel, why uh, should I? Uh, why should they suffer? Why should I protest? So uh, the situation is uh, not uh, homogeneous. So. Um, uh, the process, uh, uh, the process is underway, and uh, uh, the question is who will succeed in the situation. And uh, if we close our eyes and help Russian propaganda in such a way, maybe uh, they, there will be some consequences because of this. So we should work. Uh, and uh, before ask, uh, before answering the question, I will speak o about parallels because I didn't know uh, about the role of uh, Marina Drach in this uh, film. Uh, uh, our our uh, parents, they um, uh, uh, they participated in the creation of uh, a people's movement, uh, and uh, before that they. Uh, where intelligentsia who took part in uh, movements of the uh, uh, 60s and uh, uh, the main reason of uh, uh, survival of Ukrainian people they um, and our role uh, uh, that uh, was given to us by uh, God uh, and the future generations of Ukraine will deal with the pro with these problems and propaganda is only one instrument and uh, uh, it's not the only and not the main instrument. Maybe I will simplify. Uh, Putin and Russia, they, are, uh, they lead their policy. And if you look at 10 years of his uh, speeches, uh, uh, main speeches at the General Assembly, or some discussion groups that uh, in the uh, diplomatic academy, he always says about uh, a multipolarity of the world, and uh, he says that the world should be uh, multipolar. And uh, uh, if you are a center of influence, of course, uh, the Russia should be the center of influence. But he believes that uh, he can do whatever uh, you want and influence in the way you want, and no one uh, can uh, um, uh, criticize this. So, um, uh, the ideology of Russian peace is uh, used here, and uh, other centers restrict the influence of uh, their center and um, the leadership of Russia. They uh, use all the resources of their country, and I believe without any uh, prospects, in order to reduce the importance of other centers. They want uh, to compete with uh, other centers of influence because they know that they are uh, really powerful. The European Union is uh, uh, very developed uh, uh, and, uh, industrially and economically. and. Uh, in the uh, European Europeans uh, together with the United States together militarily uh, they uh, are really powerful so uh, the uh, Kremlin tries to um, uh, disassemble their uh, alliance uh, so they uh, try to uh, influence uh, the, the military sphere, uh, trade sphere, and other spheres. All the methods are used. So the main aim of this war is to destroy, but not to uh, conquer the territory. Even the war in Donbass shows that uh, Russia don't want to gain the territory. They want to conquer. They want to. Um, uh, to establish their control, and uh, they use all their means. The, um, uh, the uh, propaganda influences uh, uh, the uh, uh, consciousness of people. They um, undermine values. They say that everyone steal and or do something wrong, so they establish such a picture. And they say that everywhere is chaos, and only in Russia there's order. And they create some illusions, and uh, uh, to and uh, they um, 
show that the country is very powerful and other side uh, do not have such um, power and uh, other tasks are may uh, they uh, support li uh, opinion leaders and political parties that work uh, against uh, human values and European values and some pragmatic interests such as trade are supported by them and uh, they do uh, them and do not uh, uh, is not paid by FSB but uh, uh, they um, uh, they gain money uh, through other things through affiliates uh, through their relatives so uh, political parties are provided with credits uh, to provide the, uh, to deliver their campaign and uh, every element has its purpose and the target of propaganda is now different from uh, propaganda that previously existed and this film shows this to us and uh, propaganda now is a means of war and uh, uh, reaching the um, goals uh, how to conquer people psychologically thank you any more questions Sorry, my voice is not very good. My name is Alex Levinsky. I work in the newspaper for Ukrainians in Czech Republic. And I have a brief question. In the movie, in the movie told about the 17th of November 2014, I thought you were in Prague on 13th of November 2015. Was it different? And And also there is some Czech guy, but he's also a kind of Ukrainian patriot and there were threats to hang him out. What about the atmosphere now? There were two very different holidays because this year there was a rally. It was called Fozeman and it was arranged by marginal groups who are against Islam, some xenophobe groups, including marginal parties. And as there was a president and taking into consideration the experience of last year, they asked police to put fences And they let uh, and they let in only the fans of Czech president. Uh, honestly, saying I didn't really understand how did they define were they fans or not. But students, for instance, who brought the flowers for to the monument, who are who were at the same place, they told him, "Sorry, we are pro we are uh, protecting the territory. You can come back in two hours." And it also say who are these fans of them and because he's got political party. Party of the rights of, of the citizens. It was called before party for the rights of the citizens, citizens named by them. And they and it was formed in this in the same offices on the territory of Russian embassy. But they failed at the election. They, ha they had just one or two senators in some uh, regions. And now they are making a new coalition. Usvit movement, as it's called. It's absolutely populist party who is in the parliament. That time they had just eight members of the parliament, but they got 7% of, vo of the voices. But the chairman of this party, for example, one month ago has been somewhere to the Karpatia and he, where he met these pro-Russian activists. So there are kind of open fascists. Also, Germans came from Pegida movement against m migrants. 
anti-Maidan, I would call them. What we saw, what we saw there, it was a kind of anti-Maidan. Yes, that's true. But here it was even more, even more rare because most of anti-Maidan were tattoos. What Tetushkas, but here anti Maidan with ideology presenter says, No, there are not, there are not Tetushkas, not, not, thank you, thank you, but not. I would like to thank all the participants. I would like to thank uh, Miss Malchevska for this movie, first of all, and listen to all that. I remembered one document that is saved in the archive of the President of Czech Republic. At the beginning of 20th century, after the First World War, Czechoslov Czechoslovak Republic took about 23,000 refugees from Bolsh Bolshevist movements. There were Ukrainians, Russians, Belarusians. There were so many Ukrainians out of them, about 7,000. And First Republic of Galek Masalek supported them, notwithstanding the hard times, because uh, that time Czechoslovak Republic was just formed. And also in this archive, there is a touching letter of one refugee from Ukraine who writes, it, Dear Mr. President, my son was born. Will you allow me as a... Uh, it's a honor to you to call him Tomas, and I would like to invite you to the, to invite you for his homonyms. So this person had this has a feeling of sincere respect to the country and to the president. Uh, there are no any uh, any con any confirmations that the president replied this man, but more important is is the different. I have a proposal and the proposal to you, maybe you can make the movie Czech Friends of Ukraine. For 100 years that passed after this president, because there are, there are a lot of Czech people like that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oksana, very interesting idea. Thank you very much for such interesting discussion to the participants, to our audience. Please, uh, you can watch this movie on the 9th of January in one plus one. After after the news at half past seven, and we at the Ukraine today we translated to English, and we will and we will show it on 9th of January in our channel as well.